truth about optimization on Facebook. And let me tell you this, most people completely misunderstand optimizations. The most experts that I see, most gurus that I see spending half their time on the internet complaining about Facebook don't, not working, fundamentally do not understand how this very core basic principle of how Facebook works actually functions. And their biggest worry is the fundamental misunderstanding of how the platform of choice actually works. And I'm here to help you not make the same mistake by listening to the same bad advice from the same bad people that were overworked and poorly trained that overworked and poorly trained other people. You can succeed and I'm here to help you do it. Once again, hi, I am Charlie. Early. Welcome to the channel. This is about optimization. The truth about it. Let's get money. Okay. First off, I want to say thank you for your time. You could be anywhere right now and I appreciate that you're here. Please feel free to subscribe or comment below if you have any questions. Also, if you like this or you want some more advice or you'd like to dive in deeper on things, I got plenty of eBooks. I got a Patreon full of hundreds of hours of a searchable archive and dozens and dozens of articles and many other things. Go to facebookdisruptor.com and you can find the right fit for you. All the way from very low to very high cost. I'm here to help you succeed. That's my ultimate objective. That's what helps me put my head on the pillow at night and feel good. The honest truth is, the vast majority of people out here teaching people how to run Facebook ads have no clue what they're doing or they just lack any bit of integrity and they're just taking advantage of folks. I can run a completely legitimate business helping folks out, making people feel good and seeing more success and less stress and still actually pay my bills. So let's make it happen for you. Optimization. So, let's get down to three fundamentals that almost everybody that I see complaining about the internet completely misunderstands about optimization. Number one, there is no such thing as your best ad. Let me repeat that. There is no such thing as your best ad. It doesn't exist. So many people say, well, I have this ad that was getting me a three X ROAS and it spent 3000 bucks. And I have this ad that got me a two and it got 5,000. Why did Facebook spend 5,000 on that one? And all of this other stuff. Well, first off, it is never about the individual ad. It is about the blended result of all of your advertising. If your net goal is a 2.5 and you get half of your money at a 3 and half of your money at a 2, you've hit a 2.5. Now, maybe your goal is two and a quarter and you're saying, well, I'm getting, you know, 30% of my money went to this three and 80% went to this two. You're still above your goal. You don't have a problem. But what a lot of people do is say, well, Facebook spent all the money on this thing that's only getting me a two. Maybe it's a lookalike audience or some interest group. God help you if you're still using those completely obsolete things. And there's a whole other thing on why interest groups are crappy. You can check it out right there. Anyway. It does not matter the success of any one particular player. Facebook's effectively a team sport. It's about the conglomerate efforts of everybody. If you have a factory floor and you have an employee that, and you're making things and you have an employee that can make three things a day really well. And you have another employee that can make 10 a day pretty well. Do you fire the person that can make 10 a day pretty well and ask the one that can make three to make 13? Do you think that person that can make three a day really well can handle producing 13? No. That's ridiculous. It's about the blended average of all of your employees that bring you to success. Really, it's about the weakest link in the chain that really factors into the strength of it. So it's not about trying to turn off the ad that got the most spend because it wasn't quite good enough. What was the thing that did horribly? If you remove bad choices, eventually you only have good choices to make. This comes to optimization of ads. This comes to the optimization of ad sets, of campaigns, of audiences, of landing pages. This comes to literally every single facet in an optimized CPM environment that you have control over. Honestly, it also has to come into play for basically every other facet of your life. You can't pick and choose the one thing that does the absolute best at a small scale and expect it to be what you prop your entire business on. It just never works like that for any business ever. That's just not the way things work. 
That's fundamental misunderstanding number one. Fundamental misunderstanding number two is the use of audiences to try to optimize your performance. Now, I hear people all the time say, well, this interest group does this. And again, interest groups are shit. You shouldn't use them. Or this lookalike audience is doing this. Or I see some people saying, well, just run 10 lookalike audiences with a cost cap after all of them. You're just running all of your ads and see what works. Like, yeah, you can do that. There is some limited success that you can get there. You're fundamentally capping any ability to truly scale your brand and you're going to get working harder and harder and harder for worse and worse results. Absolutely. Hey, look, if that's your goal, first off, I really want to challenge what you think your goal should be, but I'm not here to judge you. I will gladly, openly, and warmly, and accurately judge the folks that teach that, and I do that all the time. Taylor, I'm talking to you, yes, and if he sees this, or if you see him, let him know that I know exactly what his strategy is, and I'm going to rip it to pieces in 30 seconds right now. So, why is this a bad idea? Number one, it's not about your audience, it is about your ad. Facebook tries to keep people on the platform for as long as possible. The average person swipes the height of the Eiffel Tower on a daily basis. Your job is to turn that attention into money. If you try to appease your end user by showing them a better and better ad with effectively has a lower bounce rate and a higher click through rate, because remember, every ad is a web page, and every web page effectively makes a look like audience because Facebook's trying to show that ad to the right person, then you are ultimately going to find greater and greater efficiencies. If instead you say, I don't give a damn about the user, I'm going to force my ad, whether regardless of whether or not it's a good fit, and I'm going to find any audience I possibly can and pull the fucking lottery tickets out of my ass to try to force a bad experience on people and then complain when my results are unstable and my business costs go up. Understand that you are the architect of your own demise in that case. If you disrespect your customer as a core business practice, when you fail as a business, it's not your customer's fault. And I really want to drive that home. The best way of getting better is not by audience hacking your way to success. An audience in Facebook is saying, I have an ad. This ad appeals to X people. And remember, every ad makes its own lookalike audience. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pay extra to reduce the scope of everybody that this ad wants to do. So if it's a big giant circle, I'm gonna target only these people over here. And I'm gonna pay a fee to prevent my ad from reaching everybody that it thinks would actually do really well. So I'm gonna pay a premium to exclude good choices. And then, instead of trying to make a better ad, I'm just going to try to bid hack my way through forcing my media in front of people, forcing my content in front of people. I'm gonna say, you know what, customer? Fuck you. I'm going to bother you until you buy or I'm going to find some other dumbass that will. And then me as a business is going to complain when my best ads only last for four or five days, which isn't even enough time for it to realistically hit any amount of stability. No ad lasts for four days and then dies off. Your ad should be lasting for weeks or months. I have ads running for years because I decided that caring about the customer was more important than feeling good and making Facebook look good on a report, because that doesn't matter. Your inconsistencies and your inability to see long-term growth and good customer service with your brand has a lot to do with how much of a shit you give about your customer. And it's not just in making your ads, it's also your customer service, it's also product design, there's a lot of those things that go into it as well. But if you are using a lot of lookalike audiences, which is basically trying to predict the future, and then a long attribution window, seven day one click, which is now what, he, what so and so has to deal with, with a certain three letter business name, commonly in the shorthand, where they suggest, look, go for a seven day click one day view, go for a lookalike audience, go for a cost cap. What you're doing is saying, I want you to predict the future a week from now. I want you to also re charge me extra to try to predict the behavior of a reduced amount of options. So I want you to be dumber, predict the future and charge me extra to then predict how somebody's going to behave on how much I can charge to get them. So you are stacking multiple efforts to predict the future on lower and lower quality of data on the backbone of an ethos of disrespecting your customers, a core business practice. When you deal with that and you see your business suffering, it's not a shock to anybody that actually understands what's going on. So, point number three, solutions. 
The last thing that I think most people completely misunderstand when it comes to optimization of Facebook is broad audiences and the element of reducing your average cost, providing options to the system and picking a choice of whether or not you want more efficiency or more volume. Ultimately, if you want to optimize, that looks like two things. One, lower cost per sale, or two, same cost per sale at a higher volume of spend. Now you get this realistically with making one of two choices. In a broad audience where you are no longer trying to make Facebook dumb so that you can feel good about disrespecting your customer and trying to predict to the future and then complain when things don't work out because you are over that high level of effort of work for low confidence of results that really relies on a business being successful far more than the advertiser being able to take enough credit for everybody else's work to succeed. What we're looking at here is a well-built business on Facebook that follows the power of five in every best practice built around the learnings of a lot of elite advertisers, not just somebody like me. Yes, I've spent well over 100 million. Yes, I've got dozens and dozens of case studies. Yes, I've been working with Facebook to define best practices for the better half of a decade. There are others like me. And here's the advice that you should really take into heart. And this became standard best practice, the thing every single advertiser should do day one in 2018. And if you haven't learned it yet, understand that first off, I feel bad for you and I'm really glad that you're here now. And if you're listening to somebody else to teach it to you, understand that they've already made the choice to either ignore this advice or they're not hip enough to have paid attention in the first place when they were taught this advice. So you organize your ad campaigns by broad targeting and you decide on targeting with your creatives and you make the choice of if do you want to get more efficient? If you want to be more efficient, you have fewer creative concepts, you're targeting fewer audiences, and you have more available choices. Basically, if you want to be better at selling something, you could say, I'm going to sell a sports car, I'm going to sell a minivan, and I'm going to have three or four sales pitches per. So when somebody walks in, I know I can put them in a sports car, I can put them in a minivan. I'm not going to try to sell mid-sized sedans, I'm not going to try to sell luxury vehicles, I'm not going to try to sell monster trucks. I'm just selling these two things and I've got a few really good sales pitches and basically over time as I'm developing new sales pitches or ads, I'm going to take the sales pitch that does the worst and I'm going to drop it in with a new sales pitch that seems like it's doing better. And then basically I'm just getting better and better and better, getting more and more efficient lower, lower costs at selling my minivans and sports cars. Now, that is going to help you do really well at getting more and more efficient, which means for your dollar spent, you are likely to see more and more scale. However, you will ultimately be limited in how many people you can sell to because it's only minivan drivers and sports cars. If instead you want to opt for a more volatile situation, which is fine because it'll allow you to spend far more money you can, instead of trying to have three or four ads for two or three concepts, you can say, I'm willing to have two ads for three or five concepts. So say your best control campaign has six ads in it. You could have three ads of two concepts, or you could have one out of six. Maybe you've got a minivan ad, and you've got a sports car ad, and you've got a sedan ad, and you've got an electric car ad, and you've got a G-Wagon ad, and a monster truck ad. Now, when somebody comes to the door, I'm gonna try to sell them. I might not have the right minivan ad to really get them to convert, and they'll go to somebody else, but I'm able to sell to four, or five, or six other types of individuals. So each ad isn't necessarily as good, but the aggregate effect of me having being able to appeal to all of those different types of customers is that I might be able to spend more money because I'm able to appeal to more individuals. I'm going to be limited in my ability to optimize my efficiency by any one of those sales pitches, but because I have more and more sales pitches, I can appeal to more and more types of individuals. And yes, there's an nth degree to when you max out at this. It tends to be around five or six different ads. You can have 10 ads in there and look, they're not all going to get delivery. They're not all going to get spent. And unless you absolutely need to get above and beyond that, you probably don't need to worry about it. Because I'll tell you this, I have easily gotten to thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a day on the back of broad audiences with potentially one or two other pieces at play with like two or three ads.
I have 100% done that. And there's no reason that you need a more complex system than creative testing by concept at a broad audience to get you to a million dollar runway to $2,740 a day. Unless you are spending over $2,740 a day, that's a million dollar a year runway. You don't need to think about anything more than getting better at that one question. Do you want to get better ads for a few concepts? Or do you want to get more concepts covered but have fewer options per. If you only have six ads in your side of your campaign, you get to make the choice of which problem you wanna have. Anyway, once again, you can check out these videos if you liked it. And if you really liked it, you can subscribe here. Talk to you later.